Hi everyone. So if you live in the U.S. and you have a job, there's a good fucking chance you work at a nonprofit like me. Apparently, there's a one in ten chance to be more specific. As of 2015, the nonprofit sector has become the third largest employment sector in the U.S. How the fuck did this happen? In part one, which was a really shitty video, and I'm sorry, I asked the question, "What is a nonprofit?" I looked at three different perspectives. The first was that a nonprofit is just an organization that does some kind of public good somehow. The second was that nonprofits are complete bullshit and don't do anything good for anybody. The third was that nonprofits are just a way for rich people to save money on taxes. In my opinion, which doesn't matter and you shouldn't listen to it, is that all three of those perspectives are kind of true. And yet, the shit is complicated. What's more interesting, though, is the history of nonprofits. They're kind of weird organizations. Historically, economies have depended on the making of stuff. The quote unquote working class has traditionally been characterized as one that mines or farms or digs or builds actual things. So, for the nonprofit sector to have grown so much and to be expected to grow even more is pretty significant. Even these big leftist YouTubers like H Bomber Guy and Philosophy Tube, shout out, what's up, do these charity streams nowadays, which means they're generating revenue for particular nonprofits. H Bomb and Philosophy Dude are both in the UK though, and I'm just gonna focus on nonprofits in the US because I don't know, that's where I live. So to start, the actual term nonprofit wasn't created until 1969. Nonprofit charities were hereby labeled 501c3 organizations. There are dozens of other 501c designations, including 501c5, which is the category labor unions fall under. I'm not gonna go over all the 501c categories though because that's really boring. What I will do is get us into a little time machine so we can go back to before the Civil War and after and before and after FDR, then to when the term nonprofit was invented, then to around Reagan's time, then to now. So then finally, maybe those of us working at nonprofits can understand why we all feel burnt out and undervalued, and why it feels like we're all working within a mutated wannabe version of a corporation that swears it's not a corporation, but runs like and feels like a corporation. I hate my fucking life. So, all the way back before the Civil War, when slavery was a completely A-OK, -okay, cool, normal thing according to like every white person except for John Brown, the concept of a nonprofit or charity didn't really exist, but there were some associations of voluntary membership where people who cared about the same shit got together and formed groups which, by today's standards, would more or less be nonprofits. This is initially how several universities were started, because certain dudes who thought education was important joined up and said, yo, let's start up a university and get people some fancy education. The university would be separate from the government and didn't have the intention of making a bunch of money. So Harvard, as one example, was a sort of early nonprofit, kinda. Most religious organizations were basically nonprofits, sorta kinda also, because they weren't governmental organizations and their goals weren't to make a lot of money. After the Civil War ended, along with, on paper, the enslavement of African peoples, more and more people rushed into big cities to get factory jobs, because that was just kinda like the thing you did back then. The reason this is important in regard to the history of nonprofits is because of motherfuckers such as, but not limited to, Andrew Carnegie, who basically invented modern philanthropy as we know it, which gave birth to the nonprofit sector as we more or less know it. Often when people talk about Carnegie's legacy of philanthropy, they focus on what he did with his wealth, but they usually omit the source of his wealth. How'd he make all that money? From the late 1800s to early 1900s, dudes like Carnegie worked their factory workers nearly to death, and in some cases literally to fucking death, and then they started these big foundations where they parked their wealth to later redistribute to the poor. Interestingly though, this is also the exact point of US history that labor unions just so happen to be the most militant, most powerful, most widely supported, and most impactful. Workers were shutting down steel mills, railroads, oil production, basically every sector of the economy. In 1917, laws were passed that made it so the foundations didn't have to pay taxes, and big donations to charities and charitable causes also weren't taxed. The reasoning was that charities were already engaged in work that government taxation would probably be paying for anyway, so there was no reason to tax rich people twice. But lo and behold, the Great Fucking Depression happened in 1929, and then this dude named Bernie Sanders became president and was elected four fucking times in a row- Er, shit, I meant FDR, sorry. FDR was made president and elected four times in a row, and everybody loved him because he cast a bunch of spells that made rich people pay for shit that helped poor people, and it turns out, apparently, that people like the Robin Hood approach to wealth redistribution more than they like the Carnegie approach. The New Deal kind of shifted nonprofit funding from the private to public sector because since rich people were being taxed a whole bunch, and that money was going into shit like food stamps and social security and whatnot, 
Rich people had less of a reason to give their money voluntarily, plus they had less money to give anyway because they were being taxed. Then again, many of them sheltered their wealth into foundations, which weren't taxed at all. So basically, from FDR's time until the 1960s, the nonprofit sector grew, and then the official tax code designation of 501c3 was made in 1969. Something else, which is kind of a big deal, happened in 1969. The 5% rule was established. The 5% rule said that foundations had to pay out at least 5% of their money to charities in order to remain tax exempt. So from 1917 to 1969, not a single foundation established by rich people was required to give any of its money to nonprofits and didn't pay any taxes. Now, foundations had to pay out 5% and continue doing whatever the fuck they wanted with the other 95%. From the 1970s onward, there was a huge shift in the culture of nonprofits, which seems to be for a lot of intersecting reasons, but one big one is due to something called the Filer Commission. The Filer Commission was a group of philanthropists and other fancy people who conducted a two year study on nonprofits. The report concluded nonprofits were a kind of third sector, separate from the private and public sectors. The private sector existed basically to make a bunch of money, whereas nonprofits didn't. But the nonprofit sector was technically private because it wasn't really part of any government entity. Nonprofits could generate revenue for operations from both private donations and government grants, but they were still relatively independent and arguably unique sector of the economy. By the 1980s, as a result of everybody taking nonprofits more seriously, or maybe less seriously, universities started offering graduate degrees in nonprofit management. Nonprofit workers were increasingly expected to get advanced degrees in order to secure full time jobs at nonprofits. And I guess the idea here was that if nonprofits were like actually do something valuable, they should start walking and talking like businesses. And indeed they did. They motherfucking professionalized. Relevant side note, this was also a time when managerialism, an ideology based around assumptions that people and organizations require hierarchies of management to be efficient and effective, was becoming widely accepted. While the argument can probably be made that the professionalization and corporatization of nonprofits may have expanded the sector's capacity, enabling it to reach more people in need, there has been a dark side to all this as well. That dark side is what leftists who love inaccessible jargon call the nonprofit industrial complex. And that term, and everything it embodies, will be getting its own video in part three the problem with nonprofits. Hey, so since my rent control video, I got four patrons. Here they are on screen, which is pretty humbling and makes me want to keep doing this. Consider giving me a dollar a month on Patreon or more if it's not a financial burden for you to do so. The link to my Patreon is in the description. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.